another session on entrepreneurship and early startups. I hope all of you are doing great around your lives. Let's look at our agenda today. In today's session, we are going to look for the answers to some of uh, the very fundamental questions regarding why are the successful startups islands of success in the sea of failure. We shall try and look for uh, some of the questions and obtain the answers. And they may include uh, why do some products prevail while many other perish? What do the winners do different? How does a typical conventional product launch work? What is wrong with the traditional product development model? And last but not the least, what are the common pitfalls that early startups or new product launches may face? So let's start with some failures. This is uh, Toyota Lexus, and uh, this is uh, Volkswagen's Phaeton. Lexus was successfully launched in the US, and the quite opposite happened to the Volkswagen's Phaeton. Well, there is a you know, very important question raised here that does hard work always pay off? Volkswagen proved it otherwise with this model named Phaeton. Phaeton was Volkswagen's flagship model, but ironically, the least VW vehicle to ever wear their badge. So why did Volkswagen decide that building an ultimate luxury car would be a good idea? They had Toyota already launching, um, Toyota already launched their model before uh, Volkswagen decided to launch the Phaeton. Lexus was successfully launched by Toyota in the US market. So Volkswagen had all the lessons from Toyota's book, but they did not learn. And all the lessons they had, they simply filed them. So it ended, they ended up burning a cash more than 500 million. Then comes Kodak. Kodak offered film camera customers the ability to put the pictures on a compact disc and view them on the TVs. It was a good idea, but it was 10 years ahead of its time and marketed to the customers who were not ready for it yet. Early adopters ignored it and Kodak paid more than 150 million during the first few years of the Kodak photo CD launch. Volkswagen and Kodak were not alone, despite the fact that Apple ranks quite high on the innovation spectrum, Apple is no exemption. They launched Newton. Apple's Newton met the same fate as Codex Photo CD. So here's Newton launched by Apple. And they, this is Codex Photo CD. The two products from two successful companies met the similar fate. So the idea was fine to have a personal digital assistant, but like Codex CD, it was five years early. Apple made the mistake and they spent like they were spending in an existing product market and they spent more than 100 million and the product didn't work so then we have uh, jaguar jaguar x type is another example where jag tried to mimic ford and created a loop and product just to burn more than 200 million in a few years of its launch. Then we have uh, Sony. Sony's mini displays were hit in Japan, but they got seriously hit in the US. So what point Sony proved with this uh, mini disc? That the US was not Japan. That not all the products or not every product is suitable for every market and for all kinds of customers. So Sony spent around 500 million on this mini disc player. Then we have Motorola. 
Motorola's Iridium satellite-based phone system is another example of creating a product that nobody wants. Many a times, the companies are obsessed with an idea that they think the customers are going to love it. They start building it. They put hundreds of millions of the cash of into their products. But at the end, their product is there and there are no customers. So they build products thinking that they are going to solve the problems of the customers without asking the customers. So this is another example of creating a product that nobody wants. This phone system was epitome of engineering and intended to serve a customer base of millions, but it went simply flat down. No one asked the customers if they wanted it. And it cost Motorola around five billion. So all these companies, Volkswagen, Apple, Jaguar, Sony, Kodak, and Motorola, they're brilliant companies and they have launched many successful products, but something went wrong with these products these companies launched. So the question is, is the picture always grim as here? No, this is not the case. Not all the time the picture is as grim as we have seen here. We have Procter & Gamble, Toyota, General Mills, who did something different to avoid those common traps to which these companies actually fell prey to. Procter & Gamble's survivor was a disposable map on a stick, sophisticated, planning and the consumer research have resulted over 2 billion in 2003. Then uh, Toyota, Toyota had uh, successfully launched uh, the hybrid vehicle, it was Toyota's Prius. Uh, it was successful to have a profitable Nike for the electric hybrid car. As a classic disruptive innovation, the sales went up and the Toyota kept dominating the US car market. They made 5 billion in the first five years. So then uh, there is another example from the same market that is uh, General Mills, making yogurt easier to consume. General Mills brought yogurt in a tube. They targeted consumer base of toddlers and little kids. The question is, uh, what makes these winners stand out and separate them from the losers? So here on this side, we have all winners. They build, they build products the customer wanted. And all these companies who were otherwise successful, but with reference to these pro uh, products, they were losers. So we need to see what exactly winners do different. So every company has uh, some sort of product introduction methodology in place. It typically involves uh, product development, launch and life cycle management, but this may not help. And uh, the, the companies may not be able to avoid the death spiral. Uh, the question is, if this doesn't work, that working on product development and its launch and life cycle management, if this is not the solution, then what is the solution? What can help us? So Steve Blank in his uh, classic book on startups has put uh, the answers. According to Steve Blank, the recipe to avoid this death spiral is by listening to the potential future customers, by going out into the field and investigating potential customer needs and markets before being committed to a specific path and precise product specification. This is exactly what Toyota did when they launched uh, Lexus in the US market. Despite being an outside company. The Toyota was a Japanese company and uh, they were bringing a product into the US market. This is exactly what they did.
They went into the field, they investigated the potential customer needs and the markets before committing any resource to the development of the new products. So what, what generally is believed to be a recipe of success of a new product or a startup? Or what are the generally believed ingredients of uh, success? So this is what uh, is generally believed that uh, for a successful product, it should be launched at the right time. It should have a large potential customer base. Should be backed up by the venture capital and uh, the nature of business. It should be in a business that is profitable. And last but not the least, uh, it should have experienced uh, management team. So Steve Blank in four steps to epiphany has uh, dissected this model by picking up an example of webvan which is an early dot com uh, failure webvan had all what is required here they were launched during the dot com bubble they had a large potential customer base every household was believed to be the potential customer of webvan they were backed up by a venture capital of more than 800 million and they were in an industry which was 400 billion grocery business and uh, last but not the least they had a very experienced management team and uh, the chief executive officer but Webvan went bankrupt in first 24 months. What went wrong? So this is uh, the question that should be answered. What Webvan did different that uh, despite all having all the ingredients that were required to be successful as these are the ingredients which are generally believed to be the ingredients of success. They have all of them. So what went wrong then? What Webvan did different or they couldn't do different was they followed this traditional product development model. They focused on the product, not the customer. They were too big, too fast and committed huge sums and built complex infrastructure and that to without validating the business model they were proposing this is what brought their downfall and the company despite having all that was required means all these ingredients of success right time large potential customer base backed up by the venture capital of around 800 million and into a business industry of 400 billion plus grocery business and then the experienced management team, all this is all they had, but they went bankrupt because there was a fundamental uh, problem with the business model they were trying to propose. So now let's look at uh, this conventional uh, product development model and um, how does it work? So this conventional business model is considered as a super cure for all types of startups and has dashed countless hopes and have turned many springs of youth into the winter of despair. This conventional product development model is in use for over a century now. It was a product centric approach and got evolved in the manufacturing industry. In the middle of 20th century, this found ways into the packaged consumer goods and became an integral part of the technology business that emerged in the last quarter of the last century. So what are uh, the key ingredients in this uh, uh, conventional product development as we can see here? It starts with uh, a concept or seed followed by the product development and then whatever is developed here is uh, tested through alpha and beta testing and then finally the project uh, the product is launched 
So as uh, the name says, this is product development model. It is product and process centric. Uh, if we look at the, you know, uh, just by looking at this model, everything seems fine, but there are some issues. So before we investigate the issues with, uh, related to this uh, product development model, let's see what these key ingredients actually mean. In the seed concept, what we do is, or uh, the company who companies or the startups who follow this model, they usually break down the founder's vision into a number of uh, ideas, and then they try and answer some of uh, the questions. So, what is a product or service concept? What are the product features and benefits? Can it be built? Is there any further technical research needed? Then who will be the customer and where will they be found? So this is done through statistical and market research data plus the customer interviews. Then there are distribution channels and uh, pricing is decided. So in this phase. Then comes the product development model. So in this uh, product development phase, requirements are collected and the de design is conceived. Whatever is conceived is implemented, then verified, and uh, then is maintained. This is uh, a typically waterfall approach. So in this phase, when distribution channels are combined with the product cost and engineering budget and the schedules, the first financial plans of the company is born. So what we have to do, we have to uh, combine the distribution channels with product cost and engineering budget and the schedules. So Webvan had all this all right. They did all this extremely well. They were founded in December 1996. They raised around 10 million from leading Silicon Valley venture capitals in 1997. And then further 393 were raised in the next two years before the company's uh, IPOs were launched. The initial public offering was there. So they had all the concept and the seed phase done. In the second step, Everyone starts working. Engineering guy starts building the product. And uh, the product is designed. The staff is hired to build it. Engineering estimates, delivery dates, and uh, development costs. Everything is fine. Marketing people are also engaged and they start refining the product market and catching the first customer with the holly launch date in their mind. No time for iteration at all. So they are all the time, they have this uh, launch date uh, in their mind, which is fixed and everything is being worked backwards. So when you have a fixed launch date, there's no time for uh, uh, learning and uh, the iteration. So as far as the WebVan example is concerned, the question is, what did WebVan do in this particular step? As we have seen, they were quite okay in this step. So what exactly they did over here? Their engineering division adopted two-pronged strategy. So there was a two-pronged strategy. So they build automated warehouses and they designed websites. So the two-pronged strategy involved building automated warehouse and designing the website. The warehouses they built were of such huge scale that none of the existing grocery chains had them. Webvan also designed its own inventory management system, warehouse management, route management, and material handling systems and softwares to manage the entire customer ordering and delivery flow process. These softwares communicated with Webvan website and issued instructions to various mechanized areas of the distribution center to fulfill the orders. Once a delivery was scheduled, the route planning uh, feature of the system determined the most efficient route to deliver the goods to the customer. What a waste. 
nobody was asking customers that uh, did they all need what the company was uh, trying to build. So this is uh, actually a common trap uh, uh, in which companies usually fall. Then come the third stage. In third step, a small number of, uh, it's actually the alpha or the beta testing. In this step, a small number of outside users are involved as to find any loopholes or bugs in the product. Beta customers are the ones who pay for the privilege of being the first ones to use the new product. At this point, if the investors find the company progressing or if they find the company's progress satisfactory, they decide to bring the new money in. Webvan started its beta testing over a thousand customers and also started aggressive marketing of their product. The last step in this conventional product development uh, model is the launch. In this step, the product is launched. Comparisons are made between the product sales and the business plan projections. Whatever was projected is compared against whatever the company is achieving. Now, this product development model seems familiar to anyone who has ever thought of founding a company. So what is wrong with it? It looks as if everyone is doing it, it must be right. So in uh, the next few slides, we shall look into some of the issues that render this conventional product development model incompatible with the startups. So uh, let's look into these, uh, into the issues that are actually the sins of, uh, so commonly termed the sins of uh, a new business. So this is the traditional new product introduction diagram. So there are uh, some uh, a number of issues uh, with the way this uh, typical traditional new product introduction diagram is built or the way it works. It may sound that if everyone is doing the same, it may be right, but this is actually the reason uh, nine out of 10 companies, they do not see the light of success whenever they are launched. So what are uh, those issues? So the issue number one with this particular uh, conventional product uh, development diagram is that the founders who are uh, the ones who conceive the idea, they know what the customer want. They assume that I know what the customers want without talking to the customers. This is their belief. Their belief that they understand who the customers will be, what the customers need, and how they will be selling their solutions to the customers. Driven from the first flaw, there is another flaw. If you believe that you know what the customer wants, you also make yourself believe that you know what features to build. Assumption that you know what features to build, you do not leave the building and you specify, design and build a fully featured product. And uh, it is yet unknown that whether a product or this feature is required by the customer or not. Now, what is the question is, what is the greatest risk or hence the greatest cause of failure in these startups. It does it the lack of product or uh, is lack of product the greatest risk or hence the greatest cause of failure? No, it is the lack of customers and the lack of proven financial model. So yes for this, no, no for this. If you have no product, you, are still looking for a product, you are learning, you are interacting with the customer, looking into the problems they have or the range of problems they have, the severity of the problem, the, the problems that customers have, are the migraine level problem and if the customers have migraine level problem, are the problems widespread and then do the customers know they have a problem? If they know they have a problem, are they looking for a solution to the problem? So if you are not asking these questions, you are lacking customers. 
and uh, with customer if if uh, there are no customers there is no company where are the customer in this product development diagram this is fundamental flaw the issue number one is we have this concept c we have the product development we have the alpha beta testing and then the launch but the customers are not here this conventional product development diagram is missing the customers do they do we have or do the founders have any other tool to get to know what the customer want in this diagram the answer is no so you are not actually asking interacting with the customers what problems they have you are product centric or uh, a process centric so this is issue number 1 then we have uh, another issue issue number 2 is uh, we have uh, the launch date is declared a holy date no one is going to change the launch date is considered immovable in case your assumptions are wrong you need to do something different but with this uh, fixed launch date this opportunity is lost focus on the first customer ship this is actually the same so what you do is you work backward and your strategy is five aims fire ready aim so you are selling your product without understanding the customers and why should they buy it we are actually believing that the people will be buying our products but people do not buy products they buy solutions to their problems so if we have not spoken to them if we have not spoken to the people who have the problem we hardly know what we are trying to solve or what if, if if there is a pain we can solve resolve the pain or we can provide the gain like in the gaming industry once the launch date is fixed the founders work backwards to have everything else aligned so the customer discovery is ignored in this we are uh, not discovering the customers because that is what is going to ensure that we have some people who have a problem that our product is going to be uh, be solving and they will be buying the product because it is a solution to their problem so every time we see a startup the focus is on the first customer ship date the energy drive and focus on finishing the product and getting it out of into the market so this is a major issue then we have uh, issue number 3 is actually too much emphasis on execution it's a serious problem so get it done and get it done fast there is no room for learning you are not answering the basic questions uh, related to the product uh, related to the Uh, the, the product or uh, the solution which we are trying to build so this notion of getting things done and getting them done fast induces some sort of blindness the people who are hired they take this message as a red flag for learning so they are not uh, what they suppose is they are hired to execute things not to learn so when they turn blind eye to learning they build things Which nobody wants they are unable to spot any issues and seek or accommodate any of the customers input this is usually a faulty assumptions and uh, before we can sell a product we have to ask the customer some very basic questions and uh, steve blank has put those questions in four steps to epiphany and uh, some of those questions could include what are the problems that our product solves do customers perceive these problems that as important or a must have and if we are selling to business mainly to b to b business to business who in a company has a problem that our product could solve if we are selling to customers how do we reach them how big is the problem who do we make the first sales call on who else has to improve the purchase how many customers 
do we need to be profitable? What is the size of the order or what is the average size of the order? For a startup, learning and discovery must be driving the execution activities. So it is not actually the execution. We should be looking for, uh, instead of execution, we should be looking for building the hypothesis, testing these hypotheses, and then learning and iteration. So the learning and iteration or learning and discovery must be driving the execution activities. So we need to actually, uh, in general, uh, this particular uh, product development diagram, this diagram put the cart before the horse. The execution is leading everything. So the correct way is we have to put the horse before the car and that is learning and innovation or learning and discovery or the hypothesis building, testing and learning and iteration should lead the execution. Because over here, what to execute exactly is unknown. So because we have not answered to the questions uh, as we have just mentioned so there is uh, no search uh, for a repeatable scalable and profitable business model if we are just focusing on execution but if our focus is on hypothesis testing then learning and uh, the customer discovery we shall be able to achieve or have a repeatable scalable and profitable business model so this is exactly a flaw in this particular uh, conventional product uh, development diagram and it's missing here. Then we have a next issue and the next issue is the lack of meaningful milestones. So what generally while we are uh, following this conventional product launch uh, uh, diagram, if we are following this diagram, we are focusing uh, our focus in the sales, marketing, and business development teams, they have fuzzy metrics, metrics to measure their progress. Sales uses revenue as an indicator of progress. Marketing, they does corporate presentations and data sheets. And very important, there is no time to stop and fix if something goes wrong because we have uh, declared this launch date and everything else is worked backward. We are hiring people on the basis of the launch date. So we are not actually stopping and fixing if something is not uh, going in the direction which we have uh, assumed it will actually go. So just comparing this to the last issue that we had over here. So there is too much emphasis on execution and we are not answering the fundamental questions. And over here, again, what we are doing is considering this launch date uh, immovable, we have worked everything backward and people are hired before they should have been hired. We are expanding without validating our financial or our business model. So we are not answering some very fundamental or very basic question related to the product and customers. So for example, how to acquire a deep understanding of the customers and their problems. This product development model does not answer these questions. How to discover a repeatable roadmap for how the customer buy. How to build a financial model that results in profitability. And some of uh, the other questions uh, uh, we can include is, uh, how much the customers will be paying if their problems are solved? Do our product features solve those problems? Do we understand our customer's business? Do we understand the hierarchy of customer needs? Have we found visionary customers, the ones who will buy our product early, means the early adopters? Is our product a must have for these customers? Do we understand the sales roadmap well enough to consistently sell the product? Do we understand what we need to be profitable? And are the sales and business plan realistic, scalable, and achievable? And last but not the least, what do we do 
if our model turns out to be wrong. So this is exactly what this uh, uh, conventional product launch uh, diagram does not answer. None of these questions are explicitly answered. These questions are of extremely fundamental nature and the conventional product development model does not answer them. So what happened to WebVan? Going back to the WebVan example, they had no milestones that said stop and evaluate the results. They had 2,000 orders per day versus 8,000 what they have forecasted in their product launch. So only a month after the product started shipping, WebVan signed $1 billion deal with the company for the construction of 26 additional distribution centers over the next uh, three years. What a waste. Without validating their financial model, they had actually committed huge sums. So that brought their downfall. So then we have the next issue with this uh, issue number five and issue number six. They are uh, again uh, linked to the issue number five. Uh, in this case, using this product uh, development diagram for customer development activities is like, uh, as Steve Blank uh, put it, it is like using a clock to tell the temperature. So you have an instrument which is clock, but it doesn't mean it can measure the temperature. You need thermometer actually to measure the temperature. They both measure something, but not the thing that you want. So this is our problem. So what we have done here, if you look at the diagram from the sales perspective and see a date for the beta test has been fixed, you tend to get a small sales team in place before that date. So you think that as the test beta test date has been fixed, so we, it's time to hire the new staff or uh, some staff. You do it to acquire your first early customers. And if the launch date is also there, you go for building the sales organization. Here, if the beta test date is fixed, you hire a small uh, sales staff. But if the launch date is also fixed, you go for uh, building of a sales organization. You do it because you have promised revenue plan or uh, the revenue plan plans that you put before your uh, investors they show revenue from the date of the launch and if you are doing that then you have you need to have uh, the organization over here building a sales organization so this is actually issue number five the business model has yet to be validated and because there were no milestones you have started hiring early and uh, when you have hired people and you are telling them that this is the launch date they are not actually learning and innovating and they are not uh, doing the hypothesis testing they are just focused on executing what they have been hired for and this is what happens then we have the issue number six so what if the customers refuse to behave in the way you predicted them to behave. So this is again the question which is not answered by this conventional product development diagram. So the issue number six, the marketing wants to feed the sales channel with marketing literature by the launch date. So they want something, uh, all the literature into the launch channels before uh, we reach here with a view to create the demand by the launch date marketing activities start early in the product development process so through these activities the marketing executives they try to create a product position they are not doing no iteration if the assumptions go wrong down the line so if the assumptions that you have uh, put in if they go wrong there is no time to fix these uh, bugs so through these activities, uh, so if there is no iteration, uh, if the assumptions go wrong, this is a very serious issue. And the scaling, if you are going to scale up, or uh, and uh, the assumptions have not be, have not been proven yet, and you decide to scale up, that is going to be a recipe of uh, disaster. 
so this is what web band did when they had uh, though that uh, 1 billion dollar uh, deal signed for building the next 26 warehouses and by that time none of their assumptions had been proven right so but at, at webvan they had around uh, 50000 customers in for 6 months but only those who had already made the purchase were coming back they failed to attract the new customers so there was no point going uh, for the upscale or scaling up but they did because they were following this conventional product development diagram then we have issue uh, number seven it is the premature scaling it is uh, linked to the uh, previous issues so you have a fully staffed organization but by the launch time because you want to uh, uh, reflect revenue on the same date and then there are uh, three documents and their limitations so what are those three documents you need to have uh, a business plan then a product development model and a revenue forecast these are uh, the three uh, documents that are guiding or they are uh, your uh, guiding documents so as a consequence of get big fast you result in overbuilding and this overbuilding is actually an ultimate consequence of uh, premature scaling you have built to produce something for which you may not uh, have the customers at the end of the day issue number eight is uh, not all the startups are alike so uh, most of the time founders make this mistake they treat all the startups alike what they do is uh, they do not consider that different products uh, all the as we have seen uh, in our earlier uh, slides like sony did it with his uh, mini display they thought if it goes good in japan it should go good in the us as well so that was a mistake so generally uh, when a product is launched there are uh, four different categories uh, when you are bringing a new product into an existing market or you are bringing a new product into a new market or you are bringing a new product into an existing market and you are trying to resegment the market as a low cost entrant or you are bringing a new product into an existing market and you are trying to resegment the market as a Nike entrant so these are uh, the different uh, types which actually couple the market type with the product so these are uh, the issues which are generally associated with uh, this conventional product uh, development diagram and these are the issue uh, that result in the startup failures this is the reason why successful startups are idents of success in the sea of failure because they follow this traditional method this is for and especially for the startup this traditional product development or the product introduction diagram is a recipe of failure so the last uh, issue uh, listed over here are the unrealistic expectations so the expectations that uh, are associated with the startup everything is taken care of in the product development diagram this product development diagram is over emphasized and is considered uh, that it is including all that is required although the basic flaw in its name it does not include anything on the finances or on the marketing it is product development yet it is uh, assumed that it will take care of everything that is associated with the launch with the successful launch of the product the customer development and product development move parallel and then uh, whereas in actual practice the customer development is uh, leading the product development this should come first this must come first so this is actually a prerequisite 
for the product development. If you have not developed customers, there's no point in developing a product. But this is the assumption that these both can go parallel or they, they can move parallel. Product acceptance is guaranteed by the launch date. So as there are no iteration, there is no learning, there is no hypothesis building, and the launch date is fixed, it means that the founders have this belief that the product, the customers are going to accept the product which they are trying to innovate or they're trying to bring into the market. And this is very reason the product see the fate that we have seen in case of Apple, Volkswagen, and then all other uh, successful companies. And we have listed a few of them in our first slide. And then the last one is enormous pressure from the investors to be profitable. And if as you are looking to make profits all the time, you are ignoring what exactly the customer base is looking like, what exactly the customers are, what are their problems? Do they understand that they have the problems? If they understand the problems, is there any solution existing uh, presently in the market or not? If there is a solution, how your solution is going to be better than the existing solution? And if your solution is better than the existing solution, will the customers buy from you the solution to their problems? Thank you very much. Uh, see you next time.